Clara, we need to talk. What's wrong? I found this, Clara. What the hell is going on? Frank, it's not what you think. Then how do you explain this? That was Troy, just a friend of mine. Don't act so serious. Friend? Only a friend? Friends don't kiss each other. Are you cheating on me with that guy? You'd better tell me the truth. You're overthinking. We were just playing a game. Relax. Playing a game? Are you kidding me? Yes, only a game. It was a truth or dare game. Kissing another guy is part of a game now. No, Frank. It was just a dare. It didn't mean anything. I swear. Clara, you kissed another guy behind my back. That was cheating. You betrayed my trust. You're making matters worse. I told you that we were playing games. It was a dare. And I didn't want to do it. But I didn't want to seem like a spoil sport. But you are my lover. Why didn't you tell me? I didn't want you to misunderstand. So I didn't say anything. Then why didn't you refuse that challenge? I was too aggressive and took on the challenge regardless. I appreciate your honesty, Clara, but I need to understand more about what happened. How did this truth or dare game even come about? It was Sarah's birthday party and we were all having a good time. You know how these games get out of hand. Who else was there besides Troy? Just some of our friends. Amy, John, and Lisa. We've known them for years. Did anyone else do something like this? Well, Amy had to sing in public, and John had to wear a ridiculous costume, but nothing as extreme as the dare I got. I see. And how did you feel after this happened? You're right, Frank. It was stupid, and I should have told you. I'm so sorry. I only love you. Well, it's clear we both have some things to work through. Let's promise to communicate better and trust each other more in the future. Agreed, Frank. I love you, and I never want to hurt you like this again. Hey, Clara. Have you had lunch yet? I'm standing under the company gate bringing you lunch. I've eaten at this famous sushi restaurant with my co-workers before, and it was delicious. I remember that you also like sushi, so I bought it for you. Frank, you don't have to do that. You'd better go home. Don't let my co-workers see you. Why can't they see me? I just bought my wife her favorite dish. This shows how much I love you. Are you feeling ashamed about it? It's not like that, Frank. If they see us, they will know we are lovers. What's wrong with that? I don't want them to know we are husband and wife. But why? Are you hiding something from me? I'm not hiding anything, Frank. I just don't want people talking about me behind my back. I also don't like being asked too much about my personal life. It's really annoying. Clara, please, we need to talk about this. I can't help but feel like you're pushing me away. Frank, it's just that things have become so complicated. I know it's difficult, but you can't keep living like that, sneaking around and pretending like we're not together. It's taking a toll on both of us. I agree, but I also have my career to think about. I've worked so hard to get where I am. And I can't risk it all for us. Clara, I just want to be with you without all these secrets and hiding. I promise, Frank. Once the time is right, I'll tell everyone about us. Until then, please understand and give me a little more time. Alright, I'll trust your judgment. But what about the sushi? Can you come down and get it? I'll give it to you and then leave. No need to do that. Take it home. 
I will have lunch with my co-workers. Okay, Clara. I'm going home. Clara! What's the matter, Frank? Why do you sound so upset? I need you to explain something to me. I saw you today, holding hands with a guy. Who is he, and why were you holding his hand? He's just a co-worker from the office. Nothing more. Holding hands with a co-worker? Clara, that doesn't seem like a typical workplace interaction. Can you tell me why you were doing that? It's not what you think. I had worn these new clogs to work, and I was afraid of tripping and falling. So, I held onto his hand briefly to steady myself. It was purely out of necessity. That's not all. I also saw the two of you having lunch together. Can you explain that? Frank, he and I were discussing a project, and it was just convenient to have lunch while we talked. I didn't think it would be a big deal. Clara, you didn't mention that it was just the two of you. I worry about your safety, especially when it's just you and another man. I didn't realize I needed to report every detail of my day to you. You know I'm committed to our relationship. You should trust me. Is he the same guy who brought you home late last weekend? Yes, Frank. That's him. We had a tight deadline and needed to work late. It was purely work-related. Are you sure there's nothing more to your relationship with this guy? I can't shake the feeling that you two are more than just colleagues. I would never betray your trust like that. You are the love of my life, and you know how much I cherish our relationship. Please, don't doubt me. I want to believe you, but there have been instances where you've kept things from me. Remember the day he brought you home? And you introduced me as your brother to avoid questions about our personal life? I did that to protect our privacy and avoid unnecessary office gossip. You know how I value our personal life. There's one more thing. That day when I came home early and looked through the window, I saw you and him kissing goodbye. I didn't say anything then, but it's been gnawing at me. Honesty and trust are vital in our relationship. I made a mistake that day. I was weak, but I want you to know that you are the only man I love. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to regain your trust. This will be the last time something like this ever happens. Clara, trust is fragile. If you genuinely want me to forgive you, you need to be more transparent with me and make it clear to your co-worker that you are a married woman. Especially that guy. If you do that, I will forgive you. I promise. I will be completely honest with him and let him know about us. Clara, there's something I need to talk to you about. What is it, Frank? I couldn't help but notice that recently you've been using dating apps and chatting with guys. Can you explain what's going on? Oh, it's not what it looks like. I was just bored and wanted some friends to chat with. It was innocent, really. Clara, is there anything wrong with it? You have a husband! Me, right here! And you're still using a dating app and talking to other guys! That's a big problem! It's not like that at all. I was just having harmless conversations with people. You don't need to worry so much. Harmless conversations? You were flirting with every guy you talked to on that app. I can explain. It's just a bit of fun. And I promise, it doesn't mean anything. Fun? I can't believe you're doing this again. My wife is flirting with multiple guys on a dating app. What kind of husband can accept that? It's not what you think. I've been feeling lonely lately. And I felt like you weren't paying much attention to me anymore. So I thought this was a way to fill that void. Lonely or not, Clara, this isn't the way we should address our problems. 
You shouldn't flirt with other guys when you're married. Are you saying I can't make new friends or talk to other people? You can't forbid me like that. You're my husband, not my dad. You can't tell me what to do. That's right, I'm your husband. You know that, but still flirting with other guys? You're making things serious. It's all just harmless chatting through my phone. We've never met in person, hugged, or kissed. You make a good argument, Clara. But it's not just chatting, it's flirting, especially with a guy named Bob. How do you know about Bob? Have you been checking my phone? That's a violation of my privacy. I also have my own private life, and I hope you respect that. Do you even know who Bob is? I just know Bob is a nice guy. He's handsome, a real gentleman, and he cares about me more than you do. All you care about is work, work, and work. You never care about me or how lonely I feel at home. I'm sorry, Clara. I've been too focused on work trying to provide a better life for us. Since you quit your job, we lost a significant source of income. I thought I needed to work harder to pay the bills. Maybe that made you feel neglected and lonely. You don't have to resort to using dating apps or talking to other guys. I'll pay more attention to you and make sure you never feel lonely again. Frank, you don't have to go to such lengths for me. I'll delete the app. Don't worry. I just want you to understand me better. Thank you for being understanding, Frank. It's the least I can do for my beloved wife. Frankie, there's something I need to tell you. And it's been weighing on my mind for a while. What's going on, Clara? I'm in the middle of lunch. I know this isn't the best time, but I can't keep it in any longer. I think we've grown apart, and I'm no longer happy in our marriage. Where is that coming from? We've had our ups and downs, but we can work through them. What's bothering you? It's not just one thing. I've been feeling this way for a while now. I miss the excitement and freedom of being single. I need the space to find myself again. We can make changes in our life together. We can take a vacation, try new things, and rekindle the spark. Please don't give up on us so easily. It's not just about routine or boredom. I think I've fallen out of love. I don't want to be unfair to you by pretending. Clara, I love you, and I can't imagine my life without you. We promise to be there for each other in good and bad times. I know, Frank, but I think our feelings have cooled down. I no longer love you like before. I want to divorce. Please understand me and agree to sign the divorce papers. We deserve to be happy. And maybe that happiness lies in different paths. No way. What do you mean by no longer love me like before? What did I do wrong? We can work through this, just tell me what's bothering you. It's too late. Some things can't be fixed now. Please don't say that. I love you and I'm willing to make amends. Please don't leave me. Is it because of something I've done? If it is, just let me know and I'll change it. Have I failed you as a husband? It's not you. It's just me. I've made up my mind. I don't want to live with you anymore. I don't love you anymore. I gave you everything I had. Why do you want to leave me? It's about the money. Huh? What do you mean? The money you gave me is too little. I can't buy anything I want or live the way I want. Do you understand, Frank? What? So you've been with me for five years just because of my money? That's right. I agreed to marry you because your father owns a huge company. 
That's why I quit my job. But recently, I heard that the company is having trouble and is at risk of bankruptcy. That's why the amount of money you give me is getting less and less. How can that amount of money be enough for my needs? I can't believe this. Have you ever loved me, Clara? Oh, Frankie, you're so naive. I never loved you. I only loved your money. Besides, I think you still remember Bob. Bob is very rich, and he said he would give me a house and provide me with $100,000 per month for me to spend. How sweet he is! <laughs> what? You're still cheating on me with that guy just like last time! You're truly a terrible person, an adulterer. So what? I want to live happily. Living happily means needing a lot of money. And you couldn't give me that, so I left you. That explains it. I can't believe I married a gold digger all this time. Finally, I see your true nature. A selfish person who only cares about yourself. I've wasted five years loving and pampering you for nothing. Fine, we'll get a divorce, and you won't receive a single penny from me. You're still talking loudly, even though your company is on the verge of bankruptcy, Frank. I don't need your pennies. Keep it for yourself. I'll be just fine. See you in court. I hope that's the last time we see each other. That's for me to say, Frank. Frank! You didn't tell me that your company isn't going bankrupt. Oh, it's just that the company encountered some minor financial difficulties. However, everything has been resolved, so the company is still operating as usual. But why do I have to tell you that? Frankie, honey, I know that you still love me. After the divorce, I felt regretful. I concluded too hastily. I realized I still love you very much. Let's get back together. Are you telling the truth? Of course, I'm telling the truth. Since we were apart, I miss you every day. I miss the days we were together. I was very regretful and blamed myself every day. I want to be your wife again. Please give me the chance to correct my mistakes. You're the one who left me when I needed you the most. There's no chance for you. That's because I was blind and fooled by those shiny things and flattery. Where is your Bob? The guy who promised to give you a house and a lot of money. What happened to him, huh? Tell him to bring you home and stop contacting me scoundrel. He lied to me with those flatteries. He doesn't have a house or money. He said he needed to build the company and borrowed $300,000 from me. After that, he blocked all contact with me, and I never saw him again. He abandoned me and took all the money I had. I have nowhere else to go. A gold digger being swindled out of all her money by someone else. How ironic is that? Frankie, honey! After leaving you, I realized that you were the only one who treated me well. I know you still love me, Frank. Let's get back together. I'll be a good wife. I'll never let you down. Let's forget everything in the past and move forward to the present and the future. Great acting, Clara. <laughs> I almost believed it was true. But too bad. Your lie can't fool me again. What do you mean? I'm telling the truth. Yeah, whatever you say, Clara. There's a truth that you don't know. Bob is my friend. And he told me everything. So everything you did, I already know, including all of your lies. 
What? I didn't know Bob was your friend. You never told me about him. Of course, you don't know that Bob is my friend because you have never met my friends. You don't even let them come to our house just because you don't like them. I was a fool at that time, listening to everything you said. Now I know one more thing about you, Clara. You are not just a gold digger, you are also an actor. You play the victim very well. Your lies make others feel sorry for you. However, they do not know that behind the pitiful face lies a poisonous snake ready to bite anyone for its benefit. It's not like that. I'm not that kind of person. I was tricked and abandoned. Please believe me, Frankie. Stop calling me that. It makes me sick. You don't have to lie to me, Clara. Bob told me the truth about your story. Since Bob realized that you were my wife at first, he immediately stopped talking to you and told me about this. I thought you would stop talking to him too. But no, you truly do not disappoint me. <laughs> Such a large gold mine like that. How could a gold digger like you resist? So you kept bothering Bob by texting and calling. Bob is telling lies. It's true I texted him, but that's all. He was the one who seduced me with flattery. He is the true scammer. I would never have done that to you if he hadn't brainwashed me. He brainwashed you? That's right. It's all his fault. It was he who made me betray you. You know that I love you so much. I would never want to do that to you, Frank. Do you think I'm that stupid, Clara? I know exactly who the liar is here. Bob showed me your inbox. You're the one who flirts all the time. You even arranged to meet him while your husband had to earn money to pay for your luxurious pleasures. Even in difficult times, I always tried to follow your wishes. But you are an ignorant person. You had an affair and still want to speak ill of my friend? No, you're misunderstanding. There's nothing to misunderstand. By the way, there's something you don't know. What? I didn't do anything wrong. Deny so soon? <laughs> As a gold digger, you are so easy to fool. What are you saying? Since finding out that you continued to text Bob, Bob and I have been planning to expose you. There's nothing wrong with my company. It's even growing beyond expectations. However, Bob suggested pretending the company was having trouble gauging your reaction. At first, I thought this was childish, but I didn't expect it to reveal your true personality. After hearing the news that my company was about to go bankrupt, you immediately demanded a divorce. And after the divorce, you ran to live with Bob. What a greedy person. What? You bastards. All of you. How dare you trick me like that? I'll sue you for fraud. Just wait and see. You guys can't mess with me. <laughs> Stop making me laugh. You should consider a career in comedy. There's nothing funny here. I think you forgot something. I don't think so. I will sue all of you. Sue me? <laughs> you should sue yourself. What do you mean by that? Before that, you also stole $300,000 from Bob. Then you fabricated a story about Bob borrowing money from you and not paying it back. That's not true. You don't have to deny it, Clara. Everything is as clear as daylight. So what? There's no proof or evidence. You can't do anything to me. You really are hopelessly stupid. You don't know anything except deceiving others. There are cameras at Bob's house, and they have recorded the entire process of your theft. It can't be. I didn't know there was a camera there. 
So now, who will sue whom, huh? Prepare to appear in court, Clara. No! It can't be! I don't want to go to jail! By the way, at Bob's house, do you remember the paper on the table that you used to clean your shoes and stepped on? That piece of trash thrown on the table? What's wrong with that? That piece of trash you mentioned is a billion dollar deal. Impossible. Your promiscuous habits make you pay no attention to anything. It's convenient for you to use anything, even if it's a contract worth billions of dollars. That's because I didn't know. If I had known that the contract was worth a lot of money, I wouldn't have done it. Whatever you say, Clara. I'm sure you would have done it because you didn't know it was me who intentionally left the contract there, a place I was sure would catch your attention. And just as I predicted, you were trapped by your promiscuity. It's not my fault. You guys coordinated to frame me. You will be sued for stealing money. And now, you will be sued for destroying property. No, I don't want to. Besides, it was you who tricked me. So it's not my fault. You can't sue me for that. You'll have to go to jail anyway. One or two crimes makes no difference. Just don't know how many years. <laughs> Please, spare me, Frank. Please forgive me for the love we once had as husband and wife. The love we once had? I don't remember we had that thing. It has always been a one-sided love. You never loved me at all. You see, Clara, bad actions have consequences, and the truth has a way of coming out. See you in court, Clara. I will make sure you'll have to go to jail. Goodbye, Clara. No, wait! Frank, please don't do this. I don't deserve all of this. After that, Clara had to admit all her crimes in court. Clara ultimately paid a heavy price for her actions. It's true that you reap what you sow. She is now in jail and owes a huge debt. I will see how she will repay her debt when she gets out. Because by then, she will already be old and can no longer seduce men. So they can repay her debts. Ha! For me, my company is increasingly thriving. Bob also cooperates with my company and we plan to expand the company globally. Because I was once deceived in love, I am very cautious in future relationships. Although it was difficult, I finally found someone who truly loved and appreciated me. Currently, I am very happy living with my wife and children. <laughs>